Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be making a chicken pot pie. This is a very delicious and simple recipe that takes minimal ingredients and time and will be a family favorite just like it is with my family. So what you're going to start with is either three large chicken breasts that have been cooked and chopped or I a lot of times will just use a 12.5 ounce can of chicken that has been drained and then you can see here that I use a fork to kind of flake it, shred it, and make sure that most of the broth and juice is out of the chicken. Using canned chicken saves time and the hassle of having to prepare and cook chicken, but you can also use a rotisserie chicken to save time as well. I've used that in this recipe before and it's turned out really well too. So just whatever you wanna do, uh, the options here are in some ways endless. Um, for time saving or for convenience. But what you're gonna do is once your chicken is cooked, if you're cooking it, if you use canned chicken like I did, make sure it's drained mostly dry. And you're gonna put it into a large mixing bowl to which you'll add all the rest of the ingredients to. And so the next thing you're gonna take is a can of veg oil. I use a mixed vegetable medley that I get at Walmart. Um, there's a couple different ones, but the ones I like to get has um, diced potatoes, green beans, lima beans in it, and I think a few other things like corn and carrots, but it makes for a really good chicken pot pie. But you just wanna make sure that your vegetables are drained of all the water before you add it to your bowl with your chicken. The next thing you'll do is use a measuring cup to measure out a half a cup of milk. I used evaporated milk. I like to always try to keep a can of evaporated milk on hand for moments where I don't have fresh milk available. It works just as fine. I've never noticed a difference um, and nobody else has either. And so just measure out your half a cup of milk, whether that's evaporated milk or normal refrigerated milk. And you're gonna add it to your mixing bowl with your veg oil and your chicken. The next thing you're gonna do is add one can of cream of chicken soup to your mixing bowl. Now you'll notice in the description box in the ingredient list that the recipe does call for one can of cream of celery soup. And I've used that before and it is really good, but for this time and this occasion, I had cream of chicken on hand and so that's what I used instead. Uh, you can substitute just like I did and it changes the flavor just a little bit but it still gives a very good flavor to the chicken pot pie. The next can of cream of soup that you're gonna add is a can of cream of potato soup. Now I will say here that that is one cream of soup that I would not substitute in this chicken pot pie. The cream of potato soup adds flavor and uh, a depth of texture that another cream of soup probably won't give. So I would not substitute that soup like I did the cream of celery soup. Now that you've got your cream of soups added to your mixing bowl, that's all of your ingredients that you'll need besides your two pie crust. And so what you're gonna do at this point is take a spoon or a spatula and just make sure to stir and incorporate all of your ingredients together so it's creamy, uniform, and ready to be baked into the chicken pot pie. So what you'll do next is take two refrigerated pie crust uh, or you can make homemade pie crust if you would like to do that too. But you're gonna take a nine inch pie dish, take one of your crust and put it along the bottom of the pan and let the edges of the crust overlap just a little bit so that later we can tuck in the pie edges together. Now that your bottom crust is ready in your pan, you'll take your second crust and lay it flat on your counter. 
and then take a sharp knife to cut slits or design in the top of your crust if you would like. Make sure to use a good sharp knife so that it makes an even cut. I love Rada knives. You see the one I showed here. You can buy these on Amazon. Sometimes around you there might be uh, a local dealer that carries them at maybe a hardware store or a different place, but they're a very reliable and good knife that can last generations. Um, but I like to cut a little design in my pie crust. You don't have to go this route. You just need to make a couple of slits so that the crust can vent and it will cook thoroughly. Now what you're going to do is take uh, your mixing bowl with ingredients and you're going to fill your bottom crust with all of the filling. And once you get it in there, you'll take the spatula or a spoon and just kind of make sure it's evenly spread and level um, in the crust before you add your top crust to your pie. The next thing you're gonna do is take your pie crust, put it on top of your pie, and then you're gonna just crimp the edges together on the sides. I take the top crust and the bottom crust, pinch them together and use my finger to make a little crimp design. You could also do the same with a fork and use the teeth of the fork to crimp it together to seal it. The rule of thumb with food is this, it doesn't have to be pretty to taste good. So make this pie look however you would like to but realize it's gonna be delicious and wholesome for your family. Once your pie is ready for the oven, you'll put it in your oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 45 minutes to an hour or until the crust is golden brown. In the description box below, you'll find all of the instructions and the ingredients for this recipe. I hope you enjoy it. Comment below if you do. Make sure to like and subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. Come back and see us.